I didn't get to the Psycho Quad last time. Again, what am I giving you? Thanks. I'm literally giving you just the skeleton of a proof. I hesitate to call it a proof, really. Um, I haven't given you all like the rigorous labeling and reasons and what have you. Uh, but I am showing you like, oh, okay, what's the general direction? And often what's the insight that you need in order to make the proof just kind of collapse? Right? So Psycho Quad, the most important thing about a Psycho Quad is that its opposite angles are supplementary. Just a quick note on the word supplementary. Just like the word, this is more of a language thing than anything else. Um, just like the word complementary, each one implies that there are two objects, right? You've got one thing and it's supplement. Or you have another thing and it's complement. So when you talk about supplementary angles or complementary angles, you're always talking about a pair, right? So, you know, 30, 150. 20, 160, and so on, right? So it isn't really right to say, for instance, angles on a straight line are supplementary, question mark, because you might have lots and lots of angles on there. That's really not that big a deal. Like, we know what you mean that it adds up to 180, but if that's what you mean, why don't you just say that and say angles on a straight line? add up to 180. Um, so this idea of supplementary and complementary really is about pairing. And that's exactly what we have over here. Okay. So if we want something over here and 180 minus something over there, how would you go about doing this? Often in circular geometry, it's all about, you know, adding stuff onto the diagram, adding constructions that make things clear. So here's what I'm going to do. Two lines, the diagonal. Now, once you have your diagonals on there, you have a whole bunch of, again, pairs of angles that are equal to each other. Loads and loads and loads. You just have to be able to see them, right? So, for example, let's pull up our Greek alphabet here. If I look at this angle, I'm going to call it alpha. There's another angle in this diagram, which is also alpha, right? This angle here is formed by these two intervals, these two chords, so it's standing on this arc down the bottom. Do you see that? So being that standing on that arc, any other angle standing on the same arc, which is also the circumference, will also be alpha. So do you see it? It's up in the top right, isn't it? There's alpha. Got it? Okay. Now, once you see that that's alpha and alpha, that doesn't get you very far, but there's loads of other pairs that are exactly the same. For example, if you look at the diagram upside down, and you see, okay, there's another arc up here, this top arc, which um, subtends two angles at the bottom, right? Do you see them? So for example, I could call them, no, I don't need that color. I could call them beta and beta, right? Okay, now beta is a cyclic quadrilateral. It's made of four chords, which means it divides off, it separates out four arcs of the circle. So therefore you have four pairs. I can keep on doing this. Where are the others? Let's see, I've got gamma, gamma over there. See those guys? And then lastly, I don't think I have a fourth color with me, unfortunately, but I've got delta, delta, okay? You see what I've done? Now this trick now, it's almost identical to proving that the angle in a semicircle is 90 degrees. What would be the line that you write down, having made all these constructions and labels? Yeah, Doris. Great. My eight angles add up to 360 degrees because they are the angles on the quadrilateral. So what I really have is, 2 alpha plus 2 beta plus 2 gamma plus 2 delta equals a full revolution. And all you need to do, just like with the angle in the semicircle, is divide the whole thing. Halve it all, which gives you this. But you can see, right? Alpha, alpha plus beta, there's alpha and beta, and there's gamma plus delta. They're the opposite angles. If I just rearrange a little bit, plus beta, whoops, delta. Okay, there you go. There's this angle over here, and there is this angle over here, right? So that's it, they're supplementary, I've added them up, okay? Of course, it only takes a really quick step to know the other important thing about a cycle quadrilateral, which is if you add an external angle over here, an exterior angle, I should say, because these two angles now, add up to 1 and 2. These add up to 180 as well. Yeah, you see that? So if these two add up to 180, 
and these two add up to 180. And this guy over here must be exactly the same as that one over there. It has to be alpha plus gamma, right? To get the four different angles to be 180 degrees, okay? So the exterior angle of a cyclic quadrant right is equal to the opposite interior angle. You do have to say the opposite one, because it's not just any of them, it's only that one, 